Welcome to channel 69, and you have Big Hurt with the Ghetto Report. What's up, y'all? Big Hurt back with the Ghetto Report. This is, this is a, a heavy giver report right here, so but we're gonna try to keep it clean. We're gonna jump right in and we're gonna talk about Will Smith and all of his so-called friends airing all this dirty lawn. Shout out to Dwayne Smith. I'm saying I mean Dwayne, Dwayne Mark. But anyway, he wasn't gonna take Will's last name no matter what happened. But long right. story short, we just wanna say you gotta watch your so-called friends. Of course, it's disheartening that a friend Will had for 40 years is coming out and airing all this on dirty laundry about whatever went on in his relationships, his personal relationships, what, what may have happened, what may have not. We're not gonna get into all that because we think people's personal lives are or their personal business. But we do want to comment on knowing how to pick your friend. And we think that um, his assistant who went on TV and started talking about all this personal kind of sounded like Miss Bonita from The Live Color. Kind of yeah. sounded like her a little bit. We want to give y'all, let that be a word to the wise and the less pick your friends wise. Now we're going to move on. We want to talk about Diddy for a minute because that's the elephant in the room. We got to talk about Diddy. We was debating that here at the Ghetto Report. You know, we got a lot of women in the office and we got some men on staff too. And we was we want to start by saying, you know, when Diddy won that recent award, he shouted Cassie out and he said that she helped him do some very dark and difficult times. We hope that he wasn't referring to these dark and difficult times that Cassie just alleged. If you've been under a rock, Cassie filed a, a $30 million lawsuit against Diddy saying that she was abused in their past relationship and that relationship, I think they had like a 10 year relationship and she said that she suffered a lot of abuse. So we were debating that here at the Ghetto Report and we were saying, you know, when I came in the office, they was like, listen, her, oh, how the mighty have fallen. I thought they were talking about Will Smith for me. Then they were talking about Diddy, you know. I'm like, oh man, what happened? You know, we ordered the pleadings and we went through the pleadings because we want this to get to the heart. Of it. So we're gonna we gonna um, go through the pleadings a little bit because in her pleadings she alleged that she met Diddy, I think she said she was 19 and Diddy was like 37. And Diddy signed her to a, a 10 record deal. Like she pulled that the 10 album. I don't know who was signed to an album deal. That's a lifetime 10 album, that's a lifetime deal. Anyway, she said that soon after that they started a personal relationship and it was consensual. She had a boyfriend, but she said that he flew to another state and he alcoholed her up, got her onto some drugs, allegedly, and they entered into a, a sexual relationship. I said, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. Hold, wait, first of all, you're not gonna speed past that like you didn't just say what you just said. She said that a lot of times she wanted to get out of this relationship, but he had some type of power over her. That's what she said in the pleading. Now, it's certain parts of the pleadings that we argued here in the office, because she said that Diddy once hung one of her friends over a ledge in a hotel, you know what I'm saying, dangled him by his feet. So we was like, listen, that sounds like happening. Diddy, you know, he don't look like the, that aggressive type or that strong, but she said that happened allegedly. And so we argued that. But the thing she said about the FO, the freak offs, that was the really alarming part, because she said Diddy would occasionally want her to participate in three-way sex with male prostitutes. He liked to allegedly watch her having sex with male prostitutes while he masturbated in the background. That's the elephant in the room, us. We know she's insinuating that if a man likes to see another man having sex, that we're not gonna get into the, anybody's personal preferences, if that's true or not, we're not gonna get into that. We just going what was alleged in the pleading. And we thought that, you know, that was argumented well. This was big, big hurt take on it was this. I don't condone abuse or any type, but I was just questioning why she would wait so long to come forward if she was in a relationship within 10 years, because I feel like that maybe it started out consensual and maybe psych, I don't know, we don't know what went on in Cassie's head where she felt she was trapped, because she said he gave her all type of expensive braces and she felt shackled by these expensive braces. I wish somebody would give me a bunch of expensive braces and shackle me, but I'm not making light of it, but you know, because two people, they feel things differently, so we don't know what was going on in Cassie's mind and if she felt shackled or not. But we just was debating the issue that like, it's kind of hard to imagine that you couldn't get away at no point in 10 years. That was Big Hurt's take on it. So I had to give Diddy the benefit of the doubt. Now, you know, we all know Diddy settled with her like a day later. Now, people said in the office was arguing that when he settled that that was an admission of guilt. I said not necessarily because people settle in cases all the time. Of course, a lot of times they don't want to go through the hassle of defending any type of accusation, whether it be true or false. And Diddy got a lot of business to run. So I'm not going to take it as an admission of guilt because he settled. I'm just saying maybe he didn't want to go through it. Maybe he felt bad for him. You no, know, maybe he still had love for her. Of course, you know, allegedly he was giving her like half a million dollars a month as an allowance. So obviously he cared about the woman. So I'm not going to take it as an admission of guilt because he settled so quickly. But I will say this. If any woman out there is in a relationship where they feel like they're being abused and, they, and the sex is not consensual and all that, you should try to seek assistance as soon as possible. Because when you wait a long time, it begs the question why and that you don't run to the authorities sooner or seek help sooner. Because she traveled around the world, she, she did it with her moms and family. I think that if this is true, in fact true, that she should have sought assistance sooner. Just for, not because she won't be believed at a later date, just 
for her own well-being and her emotional state that she you should always seek assistance sooner if this is true i can't say it's true or not and i argue with my, my little cousin why wouldn't she come forward if this was really happening she said big hurt listen you got she's out here that scared of niggas with an ebt car this dude is powerful so she might have been scared of him because of all his money and power and his influence so i said i had to take that into consideration too because I'm not a female so i don't know what a female might feel so i had to give that the benefit of the doubt but in any event we had to address the elephant in the room and hopefully this is behind Diddy and Cassie gets on with her life and it gives her some closure, some type of solace. And we wish them both the best. And we just had to comment on that because that was the elephant in the room. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. They heard, I want to give you a quick hood public service announcement. You like what we've been doing at the channel, you know what I'm saying, Stay Fly Nation? Subscribe, put some subs on there, you know what I'm saying, participate. And if y'all want to see Big Hurt in any type of situation, holler at us and tell me what you'd like to see Baby Boy and Big Hurt in. Big Hurt and Baby Park and Daddy in. This has been another edition of the Ghetto Report. But I want to say one more thing before I go. Because when I argued with my little cousin, and then she made me realize that some chicks are scared of dudes with an EBD card, I realized I started thinking about the Stockholm Syndrome. If y'all familiar with the Stockholm Syndrome, where they say that sometimes captives was starting to identify with their captors because they've been held in isolation so long. So psychologically, we don't know what affects people when they're going through trauma and difficult times because she might have been suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. So I had to throw that out there too because there's a lot of, we can argue this all day. At the end of the day, what we want to say is that if anybody's being abused, we need them to get out of that situation as soon as possible. This was another edition of The Ghetto Report. This is Big Hurt, I'm out. Give me a second. You, you fucking, you almost didn't recognize. It's easy peasy. You almost didn't recognize. What's up? It's easy peasy, y'all. You know, I'm still selling. I'm getting rid of that stuff, you know, the extra Christmas stuff. So I got all the Jordans and all the sneakers, you know what I'm saying? They fell off the back of the truck. So I got them all. I got every size. So holla at easy peasy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. They didn't recognize me when I came in because I had the blue journal. You know, I'm the original blue face. That other lane, that sucker, he took my name. You know what I'm saying? But they was calling me blue face first because I used to use all the chemicals and my face should be turned blue. But I'm the original blue face. Tell that sucker that other blue face to get my name though. But holla at me, easy peasy. I got everything in the pouch. I got everything. I got quarter waters. I got everything. You holla at easy peasy. Easy peasy in the mouth.